Hi, I'm Teacher Thomas. Welcome to A-Level Maths. This is the specimen paper for 9231 Pure Mathematics 1 for the 2020 exam series question 1. Requirement A. Given that f of r equals 1 over quantity r plus 1 times quantity r plus 2, show that f of r minus 1 minus f of r equals 2 over r times quantity r plus 1 times quantity r plus 2. I'll set a subtraction expression replacing r with r minus 1 in the first term and leaving r as is in the second term. So we have 1 over r plus 1 will become r minus 1 plus 1 and r plus 2 will become r minus 1 plus 2 minus the expression as given f of r 1 over r plus 1, r plus 2. In the left term, I can simplify minus 1 plus 1 becomes 0, and minus 1 plus 2 becomes plus 1. To subtract the fractions, I want to create common denominators. Notice that we have the shared term r plus 1 in both fractions. I'll multiply on the left by r plus 2. So we have 1 times r plus 2. And on the right, minus 1, we're going to multiply by r, 1 times r. So what I've done is I've multiplied on the left and on the right by the terms in each fraction that are not in the respective denominators. That will result in a combined denominator of r minus 1 plus 1 simplifies to r times r plus 1 times r plus 2. And with some algebraic simplification, we get to 2 over r times r plus 1 times r plus 2, which is the required expression. Now going to requirement b. Hence, find the sum of r equals 1 to n of 1 over r times quantity r plus 1 times quantity r plus 2. Notice the term hence. That means we need to follow through on our work from part A. As an alternative, we could use partial fractions to answer part B. But again, because of hence, I want to go back to see what I ended up with as a result of my work in A, which is 2 over r times r plus 1 times r plus 2. Notice how that compares to the term that we're working with. And looking back at an earlier step in part a, we know that the expression that we're multiplying by 1 half is the same as 1 over r times r plus 1 minus 1 over r plus 1 times r plus 2. Now I'm going to expand to a few terms of the sum and see what result I get and look for a pattern. So I have 1 half times, I'm beginning with r equals 1, so the first term is going to be 1 over r is 1 times r plus 1, where 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 1 over r plus 1 is 1 plus 1, 2, times r plus 2, 1 plus 2, 3. That completes the first term. Now I'll go to another term. So working again with the fraction 1 over r times r plus 1, this time r equals 2. I have 1 over r becomes 1 over 2 times r plus 1 is 2 plus 1, or 3, minus for my second fraction, 1 over r plus 1, again with an r of 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, times 2 plus 2 is 4. Here I can see what pattern is going to develop. The second term of the first expression is canceling with the first term of the second expression. And that is going to go on infinitely. And what I end up with is the value of the first half of the first term and the general component of the second half of the term. 1 over 1 times 2, which simplifies to 1 over 2, that's an actual value that won't be eliminated and that isn't a general term component. 
in contrast looking at minus 1 over 3 times 4. Here what we're looking for isn't 3 and 4, it's the general component of the term, which looking back at the left side of the screen we see is in the numerator r plus 1 times r plus 2. I'm multiplying each of these terms by 1 half, and in my final expression I'll have 1 half times 1 half is 1 over 4 minus, due to the fact that our second term is negative, minus 1 half times 1 over, and here I'm going to replace r with n. r plus 1 becomes n plus 1, and r plus 2 becomes n plus 2, expressing that we're going to the term n in our sum. This is the requirement for part b. Let's move on to part c. Deduce the value of the sum from r equals 1 to infinity of 1 over r times quantity r plus 1 times quantity r plus 2. From b, we have that the sum from 1 to n equals 1 over 4 minus 1 half times 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2. Here we're replacing the n with infinity. And if we replace each of our n's with infinity, then what we end up with is 1 over 4 minus 1 half times 1 over infinity. And 1 over infinity we can replace with 0. 1 half times 0 is 0. That portion goes away and we're left with the value 1 over 4. And this completes the requirements for question 1.